Goedemiddag dames en heren, welkom bij de volgende sessie in deze nieuwe media en marketing track. Het belooft een buitengewoon interessante sessie te worden. We gaan het hebben over public relations in bloggo-sfeer. We hebben een aantal hele interessante sprekers die daar het een en ander over zullen zeggen. Twee Engelstalige sprekers en we hebben een drietal Nederlandse heren die zullen plaatsnemen in het panel nadat de Engelse sprekers het een en ander hebben gezegd. Uh, Zometeen zal Scott Raver als eerste het podium uh, beklimmen en daar een presentatie van ongeveer 10, 15 minuten houden. Scott uh, is waarschijnlijk wel bekend als uh, de oprichter van Feedster. Vervolgens zal Neville Hobson het podium beklimmen en ook ongeveer 15 minuten spreken. Uh, Hobson is natuurlijk de eigenaar van de bekende blog Neville. Vervolgens hebben we drie Nederlandse sprekers, Paul Molenaar, Hans Mestrum en Frank Jansen. En dan zullen we aan de hand van een drietal stellingen van Frans Jansen gaan discussiëren over PR in de sfeer. Voordat we daartoe overgaan, eh, moet ik mezelf nog even introduceren. Ik ben Christian Albrink Tij. Ik ben de moderator voor deze sessie. En dat betekent dat ik in uw belang moet handelen. Met andere woorden, als u vragen heeft, opmerkingen heeft, het te warm heeft of wat dan ook. Niet allemaal tegelijkertijd, maar u kunt bij mij terecht en ik hoop dat het goed komt. Het is de bedoeling dat we tijdens de discussie een zo interactief mogelijk element hebben. Ondanks het feit dat de discussie in het Nederlands zal worden gevoerd is het wel mogelijk om Engelstalige vragen aan de sprekers daarvoor te stellen. Mark Fletcher, die jullie wellicht ook tijdens de keynote van morgen hebben gezien, die zit hier op de eerste rij en ook daar kunnen nog vragen aan worden gesteld indien dat nodig is. Bij die discussie zijn we een beetje gehandicapt. Uh, waarom? Jullie zien misschien wel dat ik een microfoon heb met een enorm lang snoer eraan. Dat betekent dat ik niet erg ver de zaal in kan lopen. Er is geen loopmicrofoon en uh, er is ook geen uh, hengel waar we de mensen mee kunnen uh, bereiken. Wat we wel hebben, en we hopen dat de techniek ons daarbij niet in de steek laat, is sms. Het is mogelijk om met de mobiele telefoon via sms berichtjes te sturen, met name vragen, opmerkingen als hou nou eindelijk eens op en ik heb er helemaal geen zin meer in, worden niet erg op prijs gesteld. Vragen kunnen worden gesteld en die verschijnen dan vervolgens op de schermen, hiervoor en daar. En dat kan dus tijdens de discussie. Maar nogmaals, ik hoop dat deze sessie zo interactief mogelijk wordt. Dus als het allemaal niet werkt, sta op, loop naar het gangpad, word boos, ga stampvoeten en dan komt het wel los hier. Goed, dan is het nu het moment aangebroken om de eerste eh, spreker aan te komen. Scott Raver, de floor is yours. Good afternoon. Uh, if you speak slowly in Dutch, I can almost understand you, but I can't speak. Uh, going to quickly talk about how blogging and, and PR come together uh, from the perspective of someone who has lived both here and in Silicon Valley. Uh, during the internet, the, during the dot-com bust, I was living over on Alexander Plan and down in Utrecht and places like this. Uh, I've been working on publishing technologies that are now very tied into blogging since 1997. Uh, I did some camera phone work and I did a, a very early blogging startup in 1999. Uh, it was very early and it made no money. Uh, far too early. Uh, but we'll just go through it. Uh, and I'm happy to answer questions during the discussion uh, and uh, afterwards if you want to find me. Feel free to email me if uh, there's something afterwards. PR is changing a little bit. Uh, and on some level, uh, it's better for PR people and it is a bigger business for PR people if it's handled correctly. Because in a lot of cases, the professional journalists are being moved a little bit aside. Right. There's, um, there's a friend of mine with a very big blog uh, named Om Malik. 
He has a blog called GigaOm. And he also writes for one of the Time Warner publications, uh, something called Business 2.0. His blog gets more readers than the magazine. Uh, the magazine is what makes him money, but his blog gets more readers. So there's uh, some interesting, interesting things going on where you have control issues, right? Everybody who's run marketing in a business wants to you know, control the message very well. It used to work. Now it's, now it's much more difficult uh, because many of your employees are blogging. Uh, your customers like that they're blogging. Right? At the, the businesses I'm involved with, the senior engineers, the ones who are actually building the product, have their own blogs. And it changes things, right? Because when a customer says, oh, why is that feature not included? Is this a bug? Well, they get an answer. And they get an answer that marketing doesn't control. If you have really smart engineers and engineers that are excited about the business, right? Then it works well. If you've got a bunch of pissed off employees, it's a problem. And, and that's the way things are going now, and the issue is exploiting it and making more money from it, not being scared of it and trying to fight against it, because that won't work for too long. And, and as, we're, as we're building strategies for building blogging into PR, you have to remember that, that PR isn't just about pictures. Right, the the new company that I'm involved with. You know, I heard uh, discussion about SMS in the introduction. You know, we're involved with SMS and WAP and doing a bunch of, of music promotion and things similar to blogging for mobile phones all over the world. Right, and so some people are typing on computers, some people are texting. Uh, in the states, there is a a very big photo blogging site called Flickr. Obviously a name that no Dutch person would have ever used. <laughs> uh, but, you know, these two 23-year-olds, husband and wife, from Vancouver, Canada, Yahoo bought their business for $30 million. Uh, because they'd gotten, you know, several hundred thousand people to start uploading into these photo blogs, right? And, and organizing them in a certain way that Yahoo found, how Yahoo found attractive. The neat thing about this is if you sit down and you look at Flickr, it's exactly what MMS should have been, right? I lived here during the MMS hype, and MMS has obviously not met many of its targets in Europe. This is exactly what it should have been. I can use my camera phone, take a picture, type in a little description, it goes off to the web, and Stuart and Katrina, who, who built the website, I don't think they've ever heard about MMS. And there's a lot of this kind of thing going on now in the blogging world, where the way information is read, what, the way it's published, whether it's photo blogging, whether it's podcasts, because podcasts are just a blog with MP3 files. Right? It is all the same technology. Or with text, a lot of the, the things that we've all been working on for 10 or 12 years are finally easy and quick and making money. On the other side, information is much easier to get. So that if you try and stop your employees from blogging, at least in the US now and you know in a year or two in, in, in Holland, they'll merely do it anonymously. They'll go to some free blogging site, and your important customers will figure out who it is. And they'll get the information out there anyway. Uh, so to the extent that you can influence the message, to the extent that you keep the, employee, the important employees happy, and the ones that touch the customers excited, you know, excited employees have always meant happy customers. 
is now just really obvious. Just a, a quick talk about Feedster um, as, as a case study for blogging and PR. Right. Obviously, it's a blogging company. We, we make a, a blog search engine. Uh, I'm no longer there, but we're all, you know, I still do some selling for them. Uh, I own a lot of shares, so I want them to do well. Uh, obviously, Feedster is going to be very early in blogging and PR because it's our business. But with 20 employees, almost half the company has a separate blog. Right? And it's the systems administrator, and it's the, the CEO, it's each of the key engineers, and some of them are on Feedster.com itself. Right? And there's certain behavioral rules for being on Feedster. Right? You know, when I was CEO, I, I put my blog on Feedster and you know, I didn't swear and I didn't make fun of anyone and you know, I just acted very appropriately. The engineers keep their blogs elsewhere. Right. And one of the engineers in particular, if you go to uh, fusion94.org, F-U-S-I-O-N-9-4.org, very dear old friend of mine, it's my second startup with him, he's very big in the open source community. And he used to be a commando. And he doesn't write things that we could put on feedster.com. Uh, a lot of it's obscene, a lot of it's dance music, but every fifth or sixth entry is exactly the information that our biggest customers want to know about our advertising system. So he's building this advertising system that's being used by AOL, it's being used by a couple other people that big. Our Japanese distributor is very interested in this. And so they go and they read Tony's blog, the, 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 the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, to find this ad server information. And it's a little tricky in Tokyo. However, sir, yeah, oh, two. Um, and it's, it's a little tricky where these very staid Japanese people have to go to, to this blog of this two meter tall, you know, ex-military guy with lots of tattoos and funny pictures and strange taste in music to get the best information on the ad server that they're investing millions of dollars in. And it makes for some very interesting PR management when, when, when it was my job. Uh, and it is typical of where everyone will be in five years. We're early, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a normal, it will be a normal problem. And the, the trick for PR people is to quit thinking about being the interface between the company and the journalists. Right, it's not just the VP of marketing and the newspapers, the VP of marketing and Emers. It's being the interface between everyone at the company who blogs and everyone outside the company who blogs. And it's a much bigger job that's worth a lot more money. But it's a lot harder. Uh, and you know, you'll earn the extra money that it get, that it gets paid for. So that's all for me, but there's there's nothing crazy, it's still about profit. Uh, and with all this, humor ends up being the best part of it. Uh, there's a great website called Simply Hired, which is job search. To attract a lot of attention, they put up a website called Simply Fired. And they feature very famous firings in Silicon Valley. And of course, those people need new jobs. They help with that too. The first guy that they uh, featured was a gentleman who was fired from Google for putting the wrong things on his blog. So they, they did well with that. They made money. Someone else hired Mark Jen, but it all works.
Thank you. Heel hartelijk dank. Uh, mag ik even wat vingers zien uh, uit de zaal terwijl Neville Hobson zijn presentatie installeert? Wie had er nog nooit van Fietster gehoord voor deze presentatie? Nou, dat valt, uh, dat valt mee. Wie weet er wat RSS is? Heel goed. Wie weet wat podcasting is? En wie weet er wat vodcasting is? We hebben dus te maken met een, uh, met een goed geïnformeerd publiek dat ook met deugd. Ik heb uh, ongeveer zes maanden geleden een sessie uh, gehost, ook over RSS en in verband met uh, direct marketing. En toen wist eigenlijk helemaal niemand waar, waar het over ging. Maar ik kan er dus van uitgaan dat iedereen die hier in de zaal is, weet wat het is, maar met name nog benieuwd is wat je ermee kan doen, wat de gevaren zijn en eventueel hoe je het kan inzetten als tool. Uh, Neville Hobbs. The floor is yours. Yes, yeah, no, it's not that. It's on the power book. since 2002. Um, I started the blog then. Uh, I've been blogging daily since July of last year. So it's a, it's a communication medium, a communication channel that I can see, uh, from my own experience, a valuable means of reaching out to people. It supports the business that I do, and uh, I'm an independent communication consultant uh, following uh, many years working for corporations in corporate communication. I've been involved in PR, uh, investor relations, employee communication, the whole spectrum of how organizations communicate with people. So my interest in, in uh, this medium and what I'm going to focus on and talking to you about today is from that perspective, from the communication perspective as opposed to the technology perspective. So um, we're called public relations in the blogosphere. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the blogosphere is a word which is ugly, I think, but everyone calls it that. Uh, in the context of public relations, uh, I prefer to call it the new media ecosystem. That sounds like a word for Microsoft using a word like that, but anyway, it's, it's more embracing than just blogs from a PR perspective. And in fact, if you look at, the, at what they are as opposed to the thing that's a website, or the thing that's an MP3 file, they're social software, if you will informal networks. They are means through which people can express themselves. And the change that Scott alluded to, in fact, is it empowers individuals and that everyone can communicate and control the means to do that. <coughs> to control work. We'll come back to that a bit later. And you do it on your own terms. Uh, the picture you see up there is, is, a, is a metaphorical uh, illustrative view of the water cooler common in big companies where people gather and chat. And that's really what this is about. It gives a means uh, to people to do things informally. We describe it now a little more formally. What is this ecosystem? It comprises things like this. Uh, not just blogs, you've got wikis. Uh, does everyone know what a wiki is? Yeah, okay. RSS, a phenomenally important 
bit of technology that enables things to happen. All these other things, uh, MMS is in there, that's part of this ecosystem. The tools, they enable people to do things, and their channels effectively. Uh, the key point though is the last bullet at the bottom right, and that's where it fits in organizations as I see it, that organizations who realize that most communication between people uh, is social. Uh, you've got the formal channels, and all the brochures, the websites, the press releases, all that stuff. Yeah, we do all those things. But what actually happens in the workplace, in the marketplace, it's people talking to people. And these are great tools to facilitate that. Companies who realize that are actually likely to be quite successful in embracing these channels. This picture, if you're in the PR business, this will be very familiar. This is how everyone communicates right now. Uh, you know what, the press release is a great example of a controlled message. Uh, it gets written, other people contribute to it, it gets reviewed, it's embargoed until a certain time on a certain date, then it goes out. And it goes out to a narrow channel, uh, press release, news release that goes to the media primarily. That's the intention of a press release going to the press. Um, messaging, as we know it from the PR point of view, is broadly speaking one way. It goes out as this diagram illustrates. This is what's happening now, the so-called new world. Uh, we've still got all that, and anything I say today doesn't suggest we do away with those things at all, uh, not by any means. But recognizing the new reality of how people are communicating with each other, and how they are telling you, the organization, their opinions, and asking you questions in ways that didn't happen before two reasons. One is the enabling channels that enable people to do it on the one hand, but the other reason is more social, if you will. Uh, it's people's attitudes have shifted. People are more uh, willing. They want to tell you their opinion. They want to tell you directly and they want to engage with you, the organization. So this picture represents the chaotic reality of the blogosphere, where you've got all this going on and it is chaotic. Uh, it's going to increase. We're going to see more of this. It's making sense of the chaos from a PR point of view. That's one of the key things for a PR professional. Uh, I expect you all saw this magazine in May, Business Week, at the end of April, in fact. It was on every single newsstand everywhere in the world. And it is, uh, or has been, a major aid to raising awareness of blogs in particular amongst businesses. It was actually a very well written article. It also coincided with uh, another interesting thing, Business Week is a mainstream media, started the blog at the time, and that blog's still going, and it's actually a pretty good blog. Uh, it engages with the readership. But what this article talked about was effectively you can't ignore these things. And indeed, April is, what, four or five months ago, uh, a lot has happened in that time, and less and less organizations, or rather put it the other way around, more and more organizations are realizing that they can't ignore these things. Uh, too many still think they can, and we'll touch on that in a second. A company called Technorati, which many of you will be familiar with, uh, produces statistics uh, every quarter that tracks what's happening in the blogosphere. And the latest numbers they produced that were detailed was July, and these are some of the stats. I think the interesting thing here is to think about 10 posts every second, every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's 10 bits of information going out there, that's more than newswire. So it's, it's a phenomenal amount of information. From an organizational point of view, 98% of it probably is of total no interest whatsoever. But it's finding the 2%. That's the tricky one. Here's an interesting thing. As of this morning, uh, Technorati in July was showing 14 and a bit million blogs they were tracking. As of this morning, it's 19.2 million. So they're tracking 5 million more since the end of July. That gives you a sense of how this is growing as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about podcasts because that is a significant part of the media mix from a PR point of view. Uh, Christian asked the question, who knows about podcasting? And if I recall from my sideways glance, it's about every hand went up, so I don't need to explain this. But two significant events happened in the last few months that really are driving this media uh, into, into the real mainstream. iTunes from Apple supported podcasting in their software release in June, meaning you could go to the Apple Store and download, subscribe to podcasts through that channel. And then last week, or was it earlier this week, it was a couple of days ago, Yahoo <coughs> announced a similar 
capability because of Yahoo Podcasts, a place where you can subscribe. Those are two mainstream channels, uh, particularly Yahoo, that is likely to accelerate growth in this media. Here we're talking quantity, not quality, which is a different issue. Organizations are embracing this in a fascinating way. In fact, many organizations are podcasting, not blogging. That's actually quite interesting. Uh, every time I do this slide, and by the way, this isn't every single company. What I wanted to do was grab some names that people would kind of recognize. These, these are most of them that I could find. Um, yet, when I completed this slide, which in fact I, I think I completed this slide about a week ago, uh, there's at least two more companies that I would pull on here. In fact, one I heard about yesterday in the US Sprint a telecommunications company started a blog and a podcast uh, externally. Very interesting. Um, they're all doing it for different reasons. Not strictly PR, although PR is an important <coughs> reason. Uh, IBM, those of you who are paying attention to this space will know IBM are at the forefront of enabling uh, a framework, creating a framework that enables their employees to blog and blog publicly. 320,000 employees can if they want to. They're also podcasting. What's interesting is it's their investor relations department who's doing the podcasting. And yet the podcasts on the face of it have absolutely nothing to do with investor relations. They're to do with technical issues, technological issues and developments and trends. Very, very interesting, uh, their strategic view of this tool. So um, many of these companies are also blogging. Not all of them, though, as I mentioned. But it is interesting. I would imagine if I were doing this slide next week, there'd be at least 10 more companies to add on to this. And most of them, as you can tell, are global multinational firms. Uh, most of them are American companies. Many of them are technology companies, but not all. And we'll expect to see growth in this. And this is interesting that we'll see phenomenal growth in business podcasting. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Here's why. It's easy. Very, very easy to podcast. Those of you who are doing podcasting know this. Uh, it's inexpensive. Effectively, you could argue it's almost free. Uh, you've got the network, you've got the computer, they're all paid for, you just need the free software, a microphone, and even a crappy little microphone you might have at home would do. Not necessarily ideal. So, yeah. Uh, it's portable, digital players, and it's available in podcast directories. So, these are all factors that will contribute to their growth. From a PR point of view, it's a powerful channel, the power of the audio. A couple of things I want to mention briefly in the five minutes Chris tells me I've got left. Um, a couple of case studies of what can happen if you don't pay attention. If you're in the PR business, either as an agency or working for a company, and you're not paying attention to what's going on in the blogosphere, it can have consequences that are avoidable in terms of damage to reputation in particular, uh, and a whole bunch of other reasons. These are two cases that are quite interesting. Dell Computer, many of you may have heard of. And this happened uh, earlier this year with a very influential blogger in the United States called Jeff Jarvis had a problem with his Dell laptop. And he couldn't get satisfaction out of Dell. And he got seriously annoyed. He blogged him. As I said, he's influential. Uh, he's not you know, any old blogger. He actually has a lot of influence. People pay attention. He's been picked up and commented on to the extent that Dell, I believe, has suffered a reputation damage in terms of perception of the quality of their customer service. It might translate to the fact that the customer service really is awful, but the perception is that it is awful, which is the same thing to most consumers. In the case of Land Rover, <coughs> this is still emerging. It hasn't hit the mainstream media big time yet. I think it definitely will. This concerns a customer in the UK who is the dream customer. He loves Land Rover. He runs a small software company. He's not an influential blogger. He's blogged his dissatisfaction. He had a lemon, a Friday car. Actually, they gave him four replacements, and each one went wrong. He finally got his money back, and he's now bought an Audi. But he's blogging it big time. This will be picked up. And what happens if you do pay attention? Apple. Who's got a Nano? Anyone here got a Nano? Oh, one handed back. Can we touch it, please? Um, you may have heard about the screen problems Apple had and the growing, rapidly growing commentaries in the blogosphere in particular and in mainstream media, mostly in the United States, about this issue. Apple didn't ignore what was going on. They made a statement very clear. Yep, we've got a problem, a uh, small batch. Uh, we'll replace it for free if you tell us. And all the commentaries gone away. They were paying attention. And 
that uh, they have unlikely have suffered damage to their brand in particular, and their reputation has not. In fact, uh, if you talk around the PR community, you'll, you'll hear respectful comments about what Apple did. Some criticism still, they took a little long perhaps, but they reacted, they didn't do a Dell, they didn't do a Landro, and Landro were ignoring the issue completely. Uh, another case, don't be lame, blogs have uh, uh, powerful purposes from PR and marketing, and uh, if you do it wrong, uh, here's an example from last week, a product called Set It Bang, you've probably seen the ads on TV here in the Netherlands, uh, actually the worst ads I've ever seen, they're dubbed, and you can tell they're dubbed, maybe that's part of the appeal. <laughs> But this guy in the UK called Tom Coates, who works at the BBC, he's actually quite influential too. He has a personal blog, and he wrote a very personal story about his father. And some guy called Barry Scott left a very personal comment. It turns out Barry Scott doesn't exist. He's a front for Silicon Bank, and they have a blog. That's Barry Scott, but it's Silicon Bank, and that's camouflage. That is lame is the polite way to describe it, but they will suffer some damage. There's lots of blogging going on about this right now. It was picked up in the Guardian newspaper the other day, not the blog, the actual newspaper, the print edition. If you get it right, like General Motors, uh, it has powerful benefits in blogging. And this quote from Bob Lutz, the vice chairman of GM and the chief blogger, incidentally, says it all as far as GM is concerned. This is a company who have seen the, the, uh, the uh, possibilities of this medium for building community and relationships with their customers. So there are ways to track and my advice to anyone in the PR business, if you do nothing else, pay attention to the blogosphere. There are tools out there that make it dead easy for anybody. You don't need to go to your PR, PR agency and have them do something. You can do this yourself very easily. There's a tool called Blog Pulse, for example. Uh, they track, track trends, they track linkings between posts and give you nice pretty graphs. It's very simple, the free service. They offer paid services too. But this gives you an idea of what's going on. Citizen journalism is a phrase we all probably have heard about. It's very common in the States to talk about the individual blogger, the influence they have that's growing. We saw this a year ago with the tsunami disaster in Asia. We saw it with the London bombings in July. We saw it with Katrina, the hurricane, recently. And we're now seeing it with the Pakistan earthquake last weekend. There are blogs appearing everywhere, people writing about this. What has that got to do with PR? You still pay attention to this because brands get mentioned, companies get mentioned. Uh, it's not about leveraging a disaster from a PR opportunity, although some people are doing that. But this illustrates the spread and the way in which individuals have the power to tell a story on the same basis as mainstream media does. So why block? Here are some reasons from a PR point of view. Uh, those of you in interest in this area will recognize some of this. Why podcast? Very similar. Uh, all of these are valuable from a PR point of view. Who should? Anyone in organizational communication. The CEO of an organization should as well. There will be objections in most companies. My favorite is the third bullet, the fourth one there. I've actually heard this a lot, increasing comedy from PR folks. Hey, we don't need press releases now, we've got blogs. Wholly different channel. But these are some objections you will hear in companies if you talk about blogging. They are surmountable very easily. A couple of surveys recently amongst the PR communities. Uh, the Edelman PR firm, together with Technorati, published results of a survey they conducted in September of 800 people worldwide. Very interesting results. You should go and take a look if you're in the PR business. Log Relations in the UK did one in August. There's a couple of interesting things to highlight there. Differences in attitude from the US to um, Europe. European respondents and how they see blocks. Again, that's online. You can go and look at the detailed uh, results yourselves. This is what all this stuff isn't. It's not a replacement for these things. It's not a substitute for traditional channels, not a surrogate, and absolutely not the answer to your prayers. They're just channels, additional channels that you regard in the same way that you would regard any other channel in terms of how to use them. A giant focus group is what it is. That's how I tend to think of it. If you're in the PR business, think of the blogosphere as a focus group. It's a way to get feedback. It's a way to engage. And that makes it more understandable, I think. So for most companies, it comes down to choices of how you want to engage with people. In fact, do you want to engage? Or do you just want to tell them stuff? Some companies will continue that way. But the enlightened companies, the people who really want to build relationships with other people, these are the choices. Thank you.
<coughs> ik zou graag de drie pedalisten willen uitnodigen om langzamerhand op het podium te gaan zitten en plaatsnemen in de, in de gezellige Witte Kuipstoel.